Ladies and gentlemen, we're here again live from Nexus 2012 with a man who needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway, Dr. Stephen Novella. Steve, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So you guys just did another live show. How many live shows is this for you? Do you keep track at this point? Uh, not, not exactly, but we've been doing it for about the live shows for about five years, two a year or so, I don't know, maybe a dozen or so live shows that we've done. And I think you did two last year at Nexus, right? Um, no, just one. No, we did two at TAM. We usually do two a year at TAM. You count them as separate shows, yeah, and then one at Nexus. We've done Dragon Con a few times. We've done a few other live events, yeah. Very nice. Now, this is uh, seven years of mm -hmm. the SGU. That's right. That's a lot of dedication. That's, yeah, 354 shows. I think this one will be 355. That's a lot of work. And you haven't missed a beat, have you? There's, there's been no weeks in there where you've missed one? Well, the first few months we were sporadic. Mm -hmm. You know, it was every, um, maybe two weeks out of three we were getting a show out. But it, it took us a few months to, to get the whole process down. We had to learn the technical issues from scratch. There was nobody really podcasting uh, who knew what they were doing. Every, 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 you know, there were other podcasts out there, but they were all starting from scratch, too. So we we pretty much had to learn as we went along. We, we made, I, to my estimation, every possible error that you could make in podcasting. We had to fix one at a time as we figured that out or as people said, hey, you should be equalizing the volumes in your podcast. Like, mm, equalizing volumes. Okay, we'll do that. You should change the way you put the date in the file. It's like, okay, I could see that. It's like everything we had to, to, to correct. In any, any case, after about three months when we, we pretty much got the show down, from that point forward, we were every single week, and we haven't missed a week in whatever that is, six and a half years. Yeah. Now, something that some of the viewers may or may not be aware of is that you've done a couple of courses that I've really enjoyed for okay. the teaching company, the great courses, uh, one of them called Medical Myths, mm -hmm. and one, Your uh, Deceptive Mind. Mm -hmm. And I'm about seven episodes, or I should say seven lectures into that. Right. But how did, uh, just tell me a little bit, how did those come about? Because to me, it's a, just a fantastic explanation of critical thinking and skeptic skills. Well, thanks. Yeah, so the, the, my relationship with the teaching company came about because they contacted me. I believe that one of the people who works for that company listens to the show and so knew about me through the SGU. Um, so the way they operate is you have to do a demo lecture that they then shop around. They do a lot of market testing of everything, of your course titles, of the course description, of the content, of you. But once you're in, once they, they sort of say, okay, you've sort of made the bar and, and they'll, they accept you as one of their professors, then they want to work with you. You know, they want to do projects with you. So they did, the first one was Medical Myths. Um, these are 24, 30-minute lectures, you know, give or take. And, uh, and then just this year, I completed my second one with them, Your Deceptive Mind, which is essentially a skeptical, critical thinking primer. I go th as systematically as I can through all the reasons why we need critical thinking, all the reasons that our brain um, is flawed and how, you know, poor perception and memory and cognitive biases and logical fallacies, the whole process of science versus pseudoscience, and, you know, and I sort of put it to all together at the end in terms of how to, you know, live a more critical thinking life. Well, don't blow it for me. I haven't yeah. gotten to the end okay. yet. Yeah, I don't want to spoil the ending for you. Um, so yeah, that was it. And, and you know, the, the response to both courses has been, uh, has been good. The process of writing them has been great. I mean, it's grueling work. It's like writing a book, basically, in terms of the amount of work that you put in. In fact, each of the lectures has a book that goes with it. That's just all the resource material and all the references and everything. Um, and they, it's, you know, it's good to have, I'm used to working on my own, like, you know, with, without any, anyone looking over my shoulder or an editor or whatever. Occasionally I get to work with an editor. It's always a great experience having somebody who knows where they're doing, who can work with your material and could, you know, make it the best that it can be and asks insightful questions and challenges you on things and corrects mistakes and things like that. So it was a, it was a really good but grueling process. Well, it sounds to me that if you've got a company like that who does a lot of market testing and they floated your ideas yeah. and lectures and came back with a big thumbs up, yeah. that's got to be a good sign. Yeah, I hope so. And um, the, the courses are selling really well. Uh, the, I'm using my, I already have a bit of a social networking, you know, uh, thing going on with a podcast and a few blogs and whatever, Twitter followers. So I've been promoting my own courses through, um, you know, my blogs and my podcast. So they're not used to that. They operate on, they send out a catalog with all of their courses in it and they sort of tie, they know what response they get from their catalog. And they were like, you know, we got this huge pulse in sales on your course, and we haven't even put out the catalog yet. It's like, yeah, it's because I blogged about it. You know, that's people who already know my writings, you know, saw the course. So they were happy with that. 
And um, so it's fun to actually teach them a little bit. You could really be using these tools to promote yourselves because they're a very traditional. Send out a catalog. People buy your, their products from the catalog. They do online. Now, they obviously have a website that people can download online uh, the course, either audio or video. Um, but uh, I think, you know, yeah, the, the, the more of the, uh, you know, using the social networking to, to promote products, it was a little new to them. Well, great. Well, good luck with that. And okay. thank you very much for joining us. Thanks a lot. Good talking with you. Same here. Take care.